like, why did I come up with this today? Why did it hit me today? It's in part probably because where I am, I'm actually at a very, very cool place. Um, it's a resort where they're doing a retreat. This particular charity group is doing a retreat for its donors. And I was looking at this group of people who um, come from all over the country. They are surrounded by people in their community that are thriving. It doesn't mean they're all at the same financial status. It doesn't mean they're all at the same professional status. It doesn't mean, you know, we all have kind of different places where we tend to do better than other areas of life. That's not what I'm talking about. What I'm talking about is you take the overall picture and they're healthy. Doesn't mean they don't get sick. Doesn't mean they don't have struggles. Doesn't mean they don't have hurts. But the overall picture is that their lives are working. I don't mean perfect, but they're functional. They're working. They're bringing joy and success and fruitfulness and a bunch of things. And the one factor that, or there's several, but there's one factor you always see. And that that is, they're not the only one like that in their local circle or extended circle of friends. That they have built a life surrounded by people that are going in a thriving direction in life. Now, I'm not talking about like a caste system or something or socioeconomic status or any of that. I'm talking about that the people that they are closest to and surround themselves with are people that are growing, people that are becoming, you know, they're improving their lives. They work on these areas of life. They work on their marriage. They work on their personal growth. They work on their careers. They work on their financial growth. They work on their giving. They work on their spiritual growth. They work on their parenting. That they are, they're growing people. Now, I noticed this, and then it reminded me of what I wanted to share with you. And I'm going to take off my, you know, sojourner hat here for a second. And I guess I am kind of wearing a hat today, anyway. And put on my, researchers you know psychologist doctor had here and that is exactly what the science tells us that health and i'll put that in quotation marks health is contagious if there's something called the village effect right that we do by and large, become like the people that we surround ourselves with in any given area. And so the community that you're joining and building, now I'm not saying, hear me, here's what I'm not saying. I'm not saying get rid of all your dysfunctional friends. I love my dysfunctional friends. I love my wacko friends. Life would be so boring if I didn't have the crazies Oh, I just love my crazy friends. But there's a difference in our crazy friends and the concentric circles that are really building into our lives. Okay. That's who you're going to, by and large, the research says the circle of friends, that community, that closest circle. That's who you're going to become like. In fact, I don't get the numbers right on this, but it, 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 here's the idea. That if, if you're here, okay, and you draw two or three circles out, so you got a friend that has a friend that has a friend. And that person begins to change in some area of life. Research has shown that it will even ripple out to you. That that's this thing of connectedness. Now, one of my favorite verses, and if you want to get spiritual about this for a moment, one of my favorite verses is out of 1 Corinthians 15, I think. That's where it is. You know what? I'll look it up for you here if you want to really know. Yeah, 1 Corinthians 15, 33. And here's what it says. It says, don't be conceived. Bad company corrects, cor corrects, <laughs> bad company corrupts good character now there's a reason if you're a parent that you tell your kid you know kind of you watch who they're hanging around with right 
because they're going to become like them. Well, that doesn't end in adolescence. It goes through life. And that's why it's really important to find mentors and groups and communities that you join. Uh, people are going in a direction that's upward in these various areas of life. Now, I would also encourage you, if you have one area of your life that is sort of here's the water line and one area that's kind of, you know, you're underwater a little bit, then apparently your circle that you're hanging around is not influencing that area enough. So what you want to do at that point is go join, in addition to your normal circle of friends, if, you know, they're taking you upward, not bringing you down. You want to join a specific circle for that vertical. Meaning, let's say that, what if you have a lot of, a lot of credit card debt? Well, your circle is not really taking care of that in showing you new behaviors or modeling new behaviors or doing things. So what do you do? If I were there, I'd go join a Dave Ramsey Financial Peace University group at some church. I'd call him and I'd sign up. And there you got a new circle of people around you focusing on that issue. If you're trying to get in shape or lose weight, you know, there's a lot of these out there. This is an endorsement, but one of the one of them that's constructed in, I think, a lot of ways that, that the psychological science agrees with. If you if you go to like Weight Watchers, for example, then you have a group and now you have a new circle surrounding you that your other group's not doing. If you're trying to get sober, you go to a recovery group or celebrate recovery or something like that. If you're trying to work out some dynamics, you, you, you drive down, you get a, you know, join a group therapy or something, whatever it is. But I want you to think about this. And here's the bottom line. I'm gonna, I'm gonna throw a word out there. Success. Success is contagious, and that's what the research shows. So what is success? Well, you got to define what avenue you're talking about that you want to be successful at. But a lot of people think, you know, success, they think about that financially, that's the dumbest way to measure success. That's one piece of life. Certainly, we have to be above water financially and i think that i think that um you know i think that somebody in a relatively normal kind of average kind of working in the job kind of salary levels can be equally as financially successful as some hedge fund Billionaire, it's not about the zeros. It's about having a healthy financial life where you're doing what you're doing and you're making what you're making and it's paying for the life that of the stuff that really matters. You know, you got a roof over your head, you got food and you, there's activities or whatever it is. We're not talking about becoming wealthy. But successful to me, it doesn't mean big numbers. What it means is fruitfulness, that you're thriving. That it's, here's another way to say it, that it's going very well with you. And people define well in different ways, but everybody knows what their thriving is about. When you're above water, when you feel good in these different areas. So it's not just finance, it's, it's your physical health and your mental health and your marriage and your kids and all of that. And the Bible uses a word that has to do with, with goodness and wholeness. Sometimes it's translated prosperity in Deuteronomy 6. God says, look, if you do these things I'm telling you to do, you'll always prosper. It didn't mean everybody would be rich, but prosper meant not the prosperity gospel. Prosper meant it's like a life of shalom a life of peace, a life of, a life of fullness and well-being. And what we find out creates that life is your community. It is contagious. 